Hello, this is Paul from quickandmobile.com and in this video we are going to answer some very important questions for people looking to make purchasing decisions for one of our lightweight foldable power wheelchairs or if people are just evaluating lightweight foldable power wheelchairs in general, what are some of the gimmicks to avoid? Before we get into the gimmicks to avoid, many people want to figure out where to find us online quickandmobile.com. That's how our website looks. You don't need to search Google. You don't need to search Bing. You can go directly to quickandmobile.com. Okay, so now that that part's out of the way, let's get into kind of the nuts and bolts of what's a gimmick, what's not a gimmick, what's useful, what has utility, and what is basically just a complete waste of time. So right here, I am looking at a Falcon power folding wheelchair. The Falcon power folding wheelchair comes in multiple different colors. It's an HD variation and a couple of the basics. It holds up to 400 pounds. It is 24 inches wide. It has two 250 watt brushless electromagnetic motors. I will discuss the validity of brushless electromagnetic motors in just a second. It has an infinite reclining mechanism and what I did is I just reclined it. You could subscribe to my, our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. We've done many more videos and a lot of the time I have help so I can kind of show you a little bit more uh, per, per video. So I'm not trying to do everything one handed, but take a look here. As we're talking about use and utility, there's not a sprocket. You can kind of see the armrests lift up as well. So they elevate as the chair reclines and you have an infinite reclining mechanism here so I can just release the chair a little bit or I can go kind of all the way up. And of course I have brushless electromagnetic motors. I have a very quick release clamp to allow me to fold the chair really within a second and I have the Dura shocks. I can put the chair when the chair's off in freewheel mode so I can make this into a push wheelchair very easily or with a couple of flips of a switch, I can make it into a power folding wheelchair. We have excellent tread, so this is a great outdoor indoor chair. It has the flat free tires, which is exceptionally useful because sometimes people are driving outside and they drive over things that are sharp and they don't wanna get a flat. Front wheels, you can kind of see how this front wheel is angled. These are designed so they don't hit the footrest and knock your feet off the footrest. And of course we have the coveted in-frame batteries. There's a little knob that's on the inside of the battery. I will go ahead and get this camera set up right here. You should be able to see the battery come out right there. So the battery slides out of the frame actually, which is super convenient. And the battery is an airline approved, FAA compliant airline approved battery. The batteries they have done uh, a tremendous amount to really upgrade batteries. So if there's any questions at the airport, you can actually just kind of scan the app. So there's battery in each side of the frame. These are all very unique features. And of course we have reflective material on the front. You notice that we have the a caster here. Now this is gonna become very relevant very soon. And we have more of a flat back here with area on either side that's exposed. That's gonna be very relevant very soon. We see this model. Now typically from the factory, these come with about 18 and a half inches in between the armrests. I added another three inches with an armrest spacer kit. That's a solid aluminum armrest spacer kit. And if you do subscribe to this video or subscribe to our channel, You'll, you'll see that I've done many videos where I actually balance on the armrests of this chair. So there's the class of these chairs that are similar. There's the Eagle, there's the Falcon, and there's the Electra 7. So that's basically a certain class of chairs, aircraft grade aluminum chairs that hold up to 400 pounds. And we see that the arms, the armrest lift you have the ability to charge both batteries on the port in front of the joystick, or you could take the batteries out of the chair and charge each battery individually. So I'm just demonstrating use. I'm demonstrating utility. 
going to speak about gimmicks relatively soon. Chairs that have gimmicks. And of course you can see a lot of this is functional just with one hand and we have a footrest that folds up flush with the chair. Now I want you to really take note of where the footrest is right now on the chair. That, that's going to become very important in a few minutes when, when I discuss gimmicks and how to avoid falling into the trap of gimmicks. So if we take a look back here, we really have a lot of options how to get in that chair, how to get out of that chair when you want to get in or out. So I can very easily slide in any way that I want. And you can see that I can very easily and very comfortably put my legs, my feet on the floor. And when I'm ready, I can just simply flip the footrest down and I have my feet on the footrest. I did lock this chair, so I'm just going to demonstrate how easy this is to operate. The joystick comes off, so it has a dongle that kind of just unscrews it. And the joystick actually can be mounted on the left-hand side. A lot of the people will put the cup holder. We, we do offer multiple complementary accessories with the chair. And of course, the joystick itself, you've got the on button, you've got a battery indicator, a horn, and you've got a speed indicator. So the joystick goes basically all directions here. You can kind of see, however, wherever I turn the joystick, the chair is going to go. Now, I want you to understand that I'm applying constant pressure to the joystick in order for the chair to move. So if I would be very floppy with the joystick, I'm giving the joystick too many commands in a short period of time to really even understand specifically what to do or where to go. And I chose to do a video in this parking lot simply because we do have the handicap accessible areas, which do make things pretty simple. So you can see the chair has no problem going up and down these handicapped accessible areas. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of time here to actually get out of the chair and kind of go over what I would think or what I would consider to be gimmicks. Now, there's a couple more basic features I'll point out. The actual seat itself, you have an adjustable seating harness underneath the seat and you have the ability to adjust how much lumbar support you want, which is really nice. Some chairs don't have that. Some chairs have things that are in a fixed position. This chair, you have the breathable mesh and you have the dry wicking material. So that's, that's important, very important. Now let's, let's imagine for a moment here that we have a chair, and I've talked about this on my channel multiple times, and I'm not a fan of them. Now there's chairs that I, that I like very much that have a battery that's right underneath the seat that's accessible from the front. That you can pull the battery out from the front. Now, where that becomes convenient is the chair is pretty easy to fold up. I mean, it's really simple to fold up. So I just kind of push the chair down and I folded the chair up. So I could take the batteries out standing here. I could take the batteries out sitting in the chair with the coveted in-frame battery design. Or if there was a battery in the front of the chair, I could pull the battery right out and that would be no issue. Now there's chairs and right now I just got down on my hands and knees that basically have the battery in the same position where the CPU is. Now, we typically don't need to fiddle around with the CPU. That's why it's located where it's located. So why on earth, and this is just my opinion, would you want to put batteries in a chair that I, I call them the back breaker position? Absolute back breakers to get on your hands and knees, fiddle with batteries, get the battery out of the chair, brace yourself, get back up, and then you've got the battery back down on the chair and then you still have the chair itself. Now this chair, without any batteries, weighs 50 pounds. This chair with both batteries in weighs 58 pounds. There's chairs that typically weigh, a lot of these folding wheelchairs with the batteries in weigh about 65 pounds. So let's talk about a couple gimmicks that people use to try to convince you that their chair is better than the other chairs and to buy our chair 
but when in reality it's just a total waste and a red flag and a red light and a, a halt a stop so there's chairs that have fancy looking backs and they angle everything to the point where there's no flat area and if you were to want to mount this joystick on the back of the chair with an attendant controller bracket for example which you can do and control the joystick in the back of the chair you would want something that's flat some people will point out the obvious and of course our chair has it as well the joystick is adjustable length and i can kind of feed a little bit more wire through here i can feed a lot more through if i want to so i can adjust the joystick and kind of lock that into place so that slingshot area can give me more space in between from the armrest to the joystick however much i'm comfortable with i can do now there's there's some people that and and we've evaluated this that have a foot rest that extends because we do have people that will ask us do you have a longer foot rest now i talked about the casters in the beginning of the video these casters are unique because they allow you to insert leg extensions. Leg extension kits that will only work with the Falcon or the Eagle or the Electra 7 or the Airhawk, which we don't have pictured right now. So they just kind of pop right in and of course the footrest folds up flush with the chair. Now people that want a longer footrest, there's a few issues with the longer footrest. So this is aircraft grade aluminum. So if I was going to make this longer, we would have to make these two pieces of metal thinner. And then you have kind of a release mechanism on either side of the footrest. So let's just say that the footrest gets unbalanced. Let's just say that you extend the footrest another five inches, which some people boast about. They have a chair that they pre-install these, which to me, it's a stop, a horrible idea. Remember when I flipped that up? If you front mount and you have that footrest that automatically is extended another five inches, that's an obstacle. That's like putting a brick wall or a, a metal wall up to, to deal with your chair. And then you would have to, of course, get in from either side. So you would have to do a side mount, which is fine. A lot of people like doing side mounts, that's no problem. But the issue is then you've got this footrest, it's longer, and if you accidentally step on it enough times and you have weaker points on the metal and it breaks, guess, guess who's not using the chair? Guess, guess whose chair is a total waste? And guess what happens if that company doesn't have stock with those footrests? Okay, guess what happens? I'm, I'm pretty sure that you came up with your own conclusion that it's not gonna be fun to drive your chair or you're just plain not gonna be driving the chair. Excuse me. So the fold up footrest, that's great the size that it is. We've contemplated and we may at some point in time give an optional accessory with the footrest that extends. But if something were to happen to that or if something were to, to break the footrest, you of course have the original footrest that you came that came with the chair. Now let's just drive around a little bit. I want to show you something here and kind of drive the point home about the footrest i'm comfortable with this and if i look i'm very comfortable with how the wheels articulate and how the wheels operate with this footrest i'm not discomfortable at all my knees can be comfortably apart if i want now if i am entering a room for example and i have a longer footrest and i miscalculate something I don't have nearly the amount of forgiveness and I can very easily snap that footrest or I could do worse if I hit the wall at the wrong angle, I can actually snap the frame of the chair. So easy driving this chair. I, I make these videos a lot of the time outside because a lot of people just like to have the freedom and the decision to, to go outside and to have an outdoor experience in their chairs and that comes to the point or brings me to the point about really lifting the chair and getting the chair in the vehicle now if you haven't already done so i'll just encourage you one more time just to subscribe to our videos to subscribe to our channel 
we we talk a lot about a lot of different pieces of medical mobility equipment to make things more convenient to make things easier for for you and uh, Vulcan lift is one of my favorite tools because that thing only weighs 20 pounds and it plugs directly into the battery of the chair it makes it real easy to lift a chair in and out of an SUV which brings me up to the next gimmick and the next thing that we're pretty strongly opposed to now I believe that a gallon of water weighs a little bit over eight pounds. So that would be five gallons of water that you would have to lift simultaneously to lift 40 pounds. And if you've ever been to the gym, not too many people would be lifting weights and doing biceps curls, for example, with the 40 pound dumbbell, that's heavy. 40 pounds is 40 pounds, so if you if you have a gimmick like I've seen, and, and we think that this is a terrible idea, where you have motors that actually come off the chair. So the, these people, there's, there's people that have started putting like a kickstand wheels down. Now again, I'm on my hands and knees here. Remember how I talked about the back breaker batteries? I'm on my hands and knees here. I have to put a kickstand wheel down to actually lift the chair up. So I actually physically have to lift the chair up to put the kickstand down. And I would have to remove a pin from each wheel. I'd have to separate each wheel. So now each wheel would weigh approximately 12 and a half pounds because you have extra equipment that would fasten the motors to the chair. So then I've got to lift 12 and a half pounds times two in the car. So let's just think about that. That's a little bit over a gallon of water each each time it's about a gallon and maybe close to a gallon and a half of water per per wheel and then you have the less movable frame because with wheels on i can put this i can turn the joystick off with my feet i can gently unlock the chair and i have this chair in freewheel I can very easily fold this chair down. Really with one hand, can fold it down. And I can, if I had a Vulcan lift here, demonstrate, just roll it on the Vulcan and let the Vulcan lift it up. So let's just say that I've got these, these gimmicks, these gimmick wheels people telling me that I can take the wheels off and then I only have the heaviest part, it only weighs 40 pounds. Okay, that's great. You still gotta lift the 40 pounds. How are you gonna get that on a small lift without the wheels? Well, I've got news for you. It's gonna be next to impossible. So if you really think about it, you have to get down on the hands and knees every single time you wanna take the wheels off and if you're using the chair, do you think that you're going to want to be on your hands and knees taking wheels off or heavy motors off that are heavier than a battery when many people buy these chairs just for the batteries alone? So think about it. Looks nice, but in actual reality, the idea stinks like a dead fish that's been sitting in the hot sun for three days. So looks nice, but I wouldn't do it because then you have to put the wheels back on you gotta load, of course, load the wheels first, and then load the 40 pound piece of the chair. So really, the whole intent of this video was just to kind of shed some light on some of the features that make our chairs unique, what you would really need in a chair, what you probably wouldn't need in a chair, what's a gimmick, what's not a gimmick, and what has use and utility. And of course, the Falcon does have a seat rest and the Falcon comes with multiple different uh, just absolutely complimentary accessories. In the beginning of the video, I, I had suggested that you would visit quickandmobile.com. Look at that reclining mechanism if you wanted more information about those chairs. And that still stands. Quickandmobile.com is an absolutely wonderful place to find out more information. And if you go there on the phone, all you have to do is you just scroll down and you can click on the power wheelchairs and you can get information about a lot of the different chairs that we have 
Okay, and that was the Falcon that we talked about. So I really appreciate taking the time to look at this entire video. You can call us as well. I, I really appreciate taking the time to look at this entire video, and I sincerely hope that this helps in answering important questions, making important evaluations as you make your purchasing decision for whatever motorized power wheelchair that you're going to get. And meanwhile, I've got this Falcon out. I want to have some fun. I want to drive it around a little bit. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you make it a great day.